everyone, it's Diego Doom here, and today I'm bringing you another review. Today I'll be reviewing the SH Monster Arts Mothra Larva and Batra Larva set. Now we all know the history of both Mothra and Batra, so I'll not be covering that. If you would like to learn more about their history from the 1992 film Godzilla Mothra The Battle for Earth, check out my reviews for SH Monster Arts Mothra and SH Monster Arts Batra. Links to those two reviews will be in the description of this video. This particular release focuses on the larval forms of both Mothra and Batra as they appeared early on in the film. Be sure to check out the 1992 film Godzilla and Mothra The Battle for Earth, also known as Godzilla vs. Mothra. It is absolutely fantastic. The SH Monster Arts Mothra Larva and Batra Larva set is another fantastic release in the SH Monster Arts line. Mothra and Batra have a fantastic sculpt, fantastic panel applications, great articulation, and a great accessories included for Mothra. First, let's admire the box. Now that we're done admiring the box, let's go ahead and take a look at Mothra's one accessory. Mothra's one accessory is her silk spray effect part and her stand. Now I consider these two items one accessory because just to be on the safe side, you're better off using these two items as one accessory. I'll explain why in just a few moments. First, let's take a look at the silk spray effect part. This effect part is very nicely done and definitely very cool. You'll see that this is a very nice long frosted piece of plastic here. Very nicely done, nicely textured and detailed. But something you'll also notice, this is a long, thin, fragile piece of plastic. To attach this, we'll grab Mothra. All we have to do is open up the mouth. There's a hole inside the mouth. Peg the silk spray effect part here inside the mouth and that's it. So now let's talk about the safety concerns I have with this effect part. So kind of zoom out some. You'll notice if you don't have Mothra understand, this effect part likes to tap on the ground. Now, if this gets caught on something at the front and you move Mothra in an awkward manner, there'll be stress down here in the effect part, which probably has a high chance of snapping. So in my opinion, I think you're better off only using the effect part when Mothra is on her stand. So now let's talk about the stand. The stand here is very simple and basic. Just a clear stand on the bottom, we have some copper information for Bandai and Toho. Then at the top, we have a cradle for the legs located underneath Mothra's head. So let's grab Mothra, pop up the effect part. All you have to do is simply align the legs with the grooves here on the cradle. So push it in like so. And it fits pretty firmly there, which is really good. And then we'll grab our effect part and go ahead and reattach that. And you'll see what we're working with here. So get that in there. So we'll zoom out some. We're also going to tilt up and you get the gist here. So now that effect part is safe up in the air and out of harm's way. So again, just be extra careful with this effect part. I recommend only using it when Mothra is on the stand. But this looks great here and definitely very cool. Very nice. Now that we have Mothra's accessory out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the Mothra figure itself. Mothra has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic panel applications, and a great range of articulation. First, to start with the head. We can twist the head side to side and look left and right. The mouth here can actually open up, which is very nice. Also, these pincers have a slight amount of movement there, so pretty cool. For the rest of the body, you'll notice this top segment of the body can actually scrunch in and out, so it's great for you stop motion guys here, which is very nice. We can definitely animate those crawling motions very nicely done there the rest of the body is very nice and flexible so we can flip her up flip her down kind of zoom out some and this is great they did a great job in articulation for this figure very form-fitting for worms definitely great job here in terms of sculpted paint apps this figure is absolutely fantastic so zooming in for the face here you'll notice we have the very nice vibrant blue eyes for the craters in the face, we have a dark brown paint app, same dark brown paint app for the mouth here, and also a gradation for dark brown to light brown on the pincers. Then for the rest of the body, a very nice weathered brown paint app, so definitely very cool here, nice and spotty. And for the segments in between, 
You'll notice we have the various creases and folds. Definitely very cool here. Very nicely done. We have our tail in. Very nice. And then underneath here, we have more creases and folds and our legs. And this is done in a dark brown paint up as well. Then we have our suction cups here at the base. Very nicely done here. They did a fantastic job on this Mothra larval figure for sure. Very nicely done here. Now that we have the Mothra figure out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the Batra figure. Batra has a fantastic sculpt, fantastic paint applications, and a great range of articulation. First, let's start with the head. We can look slightly left and right. We can look very high up and very far down. Let's spin around to the back here and see what's going on. You notice some pretty cool engineering here. As we look down, you notice this panel lifts up and leaves in a slightly gap. To fix that, just push this panel down and that's it. Now, when we look up, notice how this panel kind of slides over. So it's a very nice engineering going on. Definitely very cool. Now, sometimes when Batra's looking down, this panel will stick. If that happens, just open it up and look at that seamless engineering going on. So very nice there. Moving on to the mouth, we'll zoom in here pretty close. You'll notice the pincers around the mouth here can actually open up. So pretty cool there. Then the mouth itself can open up, which is great. The tusks here can tilt and spin pretty freely. They're on ball joints. You can see I pulled that one out. So let's push that right back in. So very nice there. Moving down the body, we'll get down here to what we'll call the torso. You have three sets of legs that can actually move. So the smaller legs here can rotate and twist side to side. So very nice there. The mid-sized legs here can move pretty freely. Very nice. And finally, our large legs here can move at two different points. We have the hip here, and also we'll call this the knees. So pretty cool. Then also this upper torso here can move side to side. Very nicely done. We'll zoom out some. For the rest of the legs, they do not move, but the rest of the body is very nicely segmented and nicely articulated. As you can see, we can flex this all over the place. Very nicely done. We're doing the worm for sure. Then finally, at the end, we have our tail that can tilt and spin freely. It's on a ball joint, so very nicely done there. Now, I must admit, on my figure, this tail piece likes to pop off, so do be aware of that. But if it comes off, you know, it's on a ball joint, so just push that in. Not a big deal there. So, Batra has a great range of articulation. Now, in terms of sculpted paint apps, this figure is truly stunning. So, first off, the main paint app seen throughout the body is a nice charcoal black, followed by some nice yellow highlights and red paint apps going on as well. So we'll zoom in some and start with the head here. So at the top, we have our very nice translucent yellow head crest. This is definitely very cool, as you can see. Very nicely sculpted, very nicely detailed, and very well textured. So very nice there. Moving down the head, we have our spines with yellow highlights. Pretty cool. We have our yellow lines going around the eyes. And for the eyes, we have a very nice, deep, vibrant compound red going on. Definitely very cool. We have the yellow here around the face. Nice spikes going on, the texture, the detail. We have the yellow for the tusks here. Then for our mouth, as you can see, there's a gradation on the pincers here, the teeth. Very nicely done. We'll move down to the actual side of the body. You can see we have our yellow lines followed by our red dots here. And this is a very nice deep blood red. Pretty cool there. On the center of the chest here, you notice this is more of the softer area of batch, as you can see. We have these nice creases and folds, which is definitely very cool. Very nicely done. We have the yellow tips here for the legs. Truly stunning here. Again, moving down the rest of the body, we'll start from the back of the head. You can see all these spines. Definitely very cool. We have our yellow on the outside and our red going down the center. Very nicely done. This figure is truly stunning. Check this all out here. Very nice. Again, we have the crease and folds here on the legs as well and our yellow tips. Very nicely done. Then our nice jagged tail. This is definitely a very cool figure. Then underneath here, we have more creases and folds. So you can see no amount of detail was spared on this figure. Wow, this is truly stunning here. I really do love this figure. Very nicely done. Now that we have the Batra figure out of the way, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. For size comparison, first up we have Batra and Mothra for SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1994 figure. All three figures look absolutely fantastic and definitely very cool together. As you can see, they're a nice scale of one another. Looks great here. Next, let's go ahead and grab our SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2000 figure. 
And as you can see, our Godzilla 2000 figure is pretty tall compared to Batra and Mothra in their larval forms. Kind of keep that all in focus there. Very nice. Next, let's go ahead and grab our NECA Godzilla 2014 12 inch head to tail figure. And again, these three look great together. Very nice there. Next, let's go ahead and grab some Ultra Axe. So, we have first my favorite Ultraman and favorite Ultra Act release of all time. This is the Ultra Act Ultraman Jonias anime color version. He looks great with Mothra and Batra here. Definitely very cool. Next, let's go ahead and grab our massive Ultra Act Golza. And as we all know, Golza is a very large figure. We'll push back some. As you can see, he is huge as compared to Mothra and Batra here. Still looks cool. And then finally, let's go ahead and grab a super robot, and that is our Sentinel T-Rex Getter 1. So Getter 1 is about the same height as Batra here. Try and keep this all in focus. Very cool. Now, let's take a moment to back up and compare Mothra and Batra with their Imago forms. Now we have both Mothra and Batra with their flying Imago forms and all four figures look absolutely fantastic together. As you can see, all four figures are in scale of one another, which is great. And also, it's great to have both forms of them as they appeared in the films. It's very cool here. Now they have the size comparison out of the way, let's go ahead and conclude this review. To conclude the review, the SH Monster Arts Mothra Larva and Batra Larva set is another fantastic release in the SH Monster Arts line. Mothra and Batra have a fantastic sculpt, fantastic paint applications, great articulation, and a great accessories included for Mothra. This set is definitely very nice, very neat, and very cool. I absolutely recommend that everyone picks this set up. Also, be sure to check out the 1992 film Godzilla and Mothra The Battle for Earth, also known as Godzilla vs. Mothra. It is absolutely fantastic. This has been another review by Diego Doom. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for more figure reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe.